all for joining us. Uh, we have another great day in Iowa, and we are pleased to announce the largest economic development project in Iowa history. Now, that's not a broken record. We've <laughs> done that a few times here lately. As you know, we recently announced uh, the Iowa fertilizer uh, plant, $1.4 billion in Lee County. Just weeks later, CF Industries in Woodbury County announced a fertilizer plant expansion of $1.7 billion. And just a couple of weeks ago, the Iowa Fertilizer Company actually uh, regained the title for the largest one when that increased their investment to $1.8 billion. Today, I'm pleased to announce that Mid-America Energy has the new record. <laughs> $1.9 billion investment in Iowa, the largest capital investment in our state's history. And this is all about wind energy. I just came back from being the keynote speaker at IWEA, the, which is, uh, the America Wind Energy Association in Chicago. Uh, Mid-America Energy is launching a new series of wind energy farms across the Iowa countryside. The wind energy industry has made significant progress, especially in the last five years. Iowa is proud to be a leader in wind energy. I'm a true believer in the idea of an all-above energy approach that means that we have a broad portfolio of different sources of energy in our state. In Iowa, we don't produce oil or coal, but we are a leader in renewable energy, both in ethanol, biodiesel, and in wind energy. As governor back in 1983, my first year as governor, I signed into law the nation's first renewable electric generation standard, which has become a model and copied, I think, by 24 other states. There has been significant progress made within the wind energy industry in terms of efficiencies over the years. Technology advances continue to make wind energy development more efficient and costs continue to decline. This project today has broad implications for Iowa's future. Companies look to our state's energy profile, energy reliability, business environment, workforce and government responsiveness before they make significant investment decisions. Our state's low cost energy and diversified portfolio have been an important part of our success formula in attracting significant capital investments to this state in the last two years. Just two weeks ago, Facebook announced that it will build a state-of-the-art data center in Altoona, right outside of Des Moines. It will be a $300 million investment. This is just the first phase. The same day, Google announced in Council Bluffs, and I don't know if this is the third or fourth phase, of their uh, data center investment increased to $1.5 billion in western Iowa. Microsoft also has a data center in West Des Moines. Iowa's leadership in the wind energy industry is a great selling point in conversions with, with, in the conversations that we're having with many of these high-tech companies. They want to have a green portfolio. They want to say that a lot of their energy for these uh, data centers comes from renewable sources, and we can offer that right here in Iowa. Iowa is no longer overlooked by high-tech new media companies now because we have become known as a state that is a real innovator and leader. And wind energy is an exploding field, and we're excited about it. Iowa State University will soon be offering the first institution in the nation to award students a PhD degree in wind energy science, engineering, and policy. So as wind energy grows, so does the Iowa economy. According to the Iowa Economic Development Authority, projects that they have worked to invest in Iowa in just the last two years total $6.58 billion. Now this $1.9 billion project is not even included in their number because there is no state funding, no state tax credits involved in this project. Truly, our state's economy is on the move. 
More jobs for Iowans has always been and will continue to be our top priority. And reliable, low-cost energy, especially coming from renewable sources, is a great selling point as we work to bring more industry and business and jobs here. We want to thank MidAmerica for being a great partner for Iowa and making this substantial investment in Iowa's future. Their commitment to lower costs for consumers and more renewable energy is music to our ears. Now I want to turn it over to the Lieutenant Governor. Well, good afternoon and thank you, Governor. It is great to join you to celebrate yet another significant milestone in Iowa's history. You've heard the success stories from our administration's effort to attract quality, high-paying jobs to Iowa. This announcement brings with it approximately 460 construction jobs with a $30 million payroll and, a 40, and 48 permanent jobs with a $2.4 million payroll. That's over 500 Iowa residents who will bring home a paycheck to provide for their families. That's over 500 families in our communities who will benefit as a result of this major investment. And this project assisted Facebook's decision to locate in Iowa, and Google has wanted to play a part in a new wind power uh, for Iowa related to the expansion in Council Bluffs. Not only that, Iowans will see a rate reduction totaling $10 million per year by 2017. This is real money back in the pockets of Iowans. Just as important, this investment sends a larger message to the nation. Iowa is cutting edge, Iowa is innovative, and Iowa is a great place to do business. Further, Iowa will remain a national leader in wind energy, energy per capita production and a top utilizer of renewable fuels. Mid-American Energy is number one in the nation for ownership of wind generation capacity among rate regulated utilities. After this new project is completed, almost 40 percent of Mid-America's generation capacity will be coming from wind. This is pace setting amount and we are all proud of Mid-America's commitment to Iowa and especially their commitment to renewable energy. And now it is my great pleasure to bring to the podium Bill Furman and he is going to expand on the great success of this story. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well first, uh, thank you very much Governor Branstead, Lieutenant Governor Reynolds for your strong support of renewables in this state and your focus on, on jobs and creating an economic environment that really allows us to do a project like this. Uh, I would also be remiss if I didn't thank our federal delegation who really put their full support into the extension of the production tax credits. Uh, without that, uh, the environment for doing projects of this magnitude and this size uh, simply would not be possible. We're very pleased to be expanding our wind uh, fleet in the state of Iowa. Today we have 2,285 megawatts of wind, or 1,267 turbines. Uh, that investment totals uh, right at $4 billion. With this new expansion of 1,050 megawatts, we'll be at 3,335 megawatts, or up to 1,923 turbines, at a total investment of just at $6 billion. Obviously these are very significant investments and uh, we couldn't do it without the help of a tremendous number of people uh, across the state, in particular within the administration of Governor Branstead. These investments have helped keep our base rate stable since 1995, and this new expansion will provide significant customer benefits for many, many years to come. Now, we understand that projects like this add to the significant work demands of the, of the Iowa Utilities Board and the Office of the Consumer Advocate, and we appreciate their efforts to properly assess our application and we look forward to working with them as well as uh, we move through that process. And then finally, uh, with the completion of this project, our carbon footprint will be reduced by over 10 percent, which underscores our continuing commitment to the environment and our full commitment to the state of Iowa. Governor, Lieutenant Governor, uh, thank you again for your focus on the jobs and the economic growth in Iowa, and we look forward to working with you to complete this project. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. Okay, we'd open it for your questions. Uh, the actual sites are still under development, but uh, generally, um, if you look at a good wind map, you can probably 
uh, get a good feel where we'll be targeting. Uh, the ultimate decision on that will be done over the next couple of months. So we could be at end at 99 hours? No, it's se it's se no. there's several counties, and look at where the wind uh, generators are today. Uh, it ought to give you an indication good, of where most deal. of the wind is. Yeah. So are we talking about west of I-35? Not always. Not necessarily. Not, not necessarily. If you look at where our current uh, wind projects are, northwest uh, Iowa, uh, a little bit south of uh, of I-80, um, those are generally the, the better wind points, but uh, as in central Iowa, yep. More central. Um, but again, as we go through the process, we'll be selecting uh, the final sites and we'll be making those announcements as the as the negotiations get so completed. No, sites that been no. There are several sites under consideration, and uh, if you look at the map, and I think you do have a map of where you already have mm -hmm. facilities, you can see where they already have made investments, and they're looking at several other counties. I would also point out this is in addition to the jobs and the competitive rates for industry, this is a tremendous thing for farmers and for uh, the tax base of these rural counties because uh, this is significant income to the farmers that are able to and still farm the ground and rent the land for these wind turbines. And then these counties also get substantial property tax revenue. So this is truly a win-win for the state of Iowa. And, and they're not ready to say, and I don't think they have settled on the exact locations, but there will be several counties where these will be located. We're not, we're not prepared to tell exactly where our sites are going to be at okay, for this project. Uh, that's negotiated at the time um, with the farmers and the landowners, uh, just as we do today for uh, various easements. And uh, again, those will be all negotiated as we begin the process of selecting the sites and determining our final locations. What was the range? Do you know the ballpark? Not really. I mean, it's really uh, negotiated between the, between the landowners. I'm sorry I brought that up, but <laughs> I can tell you I've talked to a lot of farmers, and it's a good deal. <laughs> well, it is. I mean, it's good for it's a long-term lease. It's a good deal. I, I don't find farmers complaining about this at all. They, in fact, you know, I was I was at at IWEA's meeting, and they said the closer you live to where wind is produced, the more supportive you are of this industry. Uh, we plan to start construction uh, hopefully in the fourth quarter of this year after the process with the Iowa Utilities Board is complete, and we expect to have the final turbines completed by mid-year in 2015. With the wind production tax credit on the top employment as far as whether or not the industry is sustainable, I mean, is there concern about it being in place and keeping business running? Well, certainly the production tax credit is, uh, certainly the production tax credit is critical to the to the uh, survival of the wind industry at this point in time. Now, there's a lot of efforts uh, within the industry to continue to make themselves more competitive, and, and we certainly support all of that uh, as we go forward. But uh, the work that our federal delegation did to extend it at least through uh, this year was fundamental in our decision to bring these benefits back for our customers. Because when you look at what this project will do for our customers, as Lieutenant Governor Reynolds stated, there is actually a, a very strong benefit to this uh, for them, and uh, we're very pleased to bring that to them. So, so it's more than just a, a year-long commitment to these jobs and to the sustainable way that you because we're, we're always hearing about different companies under the layoff. So the way the uh, production tax credit actually works is that once the turbine is put into service, then the tax credit exists for 10 years. And so and once the new bill, actually it just has to be started, it doesn't have to be finished. Right. There's some different requirements under this uh, one as compared to the others, wherein uh, the prior production tax credit, uh, your project had to be complete by a certain date. In this case, we just have to be started. Yep. Governor, will the state be providing any tax credits or incentives to this project? No. no. I would, I want to, I chaired the governor's wind energy coalition for the last year, spent a lot of time uh, contacting congressmen and senators. Our entire delegation, both of our senators, all of our congressmen supported this. So they were very, we had good bipartisan support on this. It was a long, hard battle. We tried all year to try to get it done. You may recall it was part of the fiscal cliff legislation at the end of the year. But I, Senator Grassley in particular, and I think was original sponsor of this when it started, 
and it's been off again, on again many times, and we've been pretty critical of the federal government because of that. We think having more stability and predictability makes sense. But he was instrumental in helping see that it was changed so that it, it's only a one-year extension, but it only has to be under, it, un, it doesn't have to be completed by the end of the year. So that's a big help, and that's what makes this possible. Well, the, the impetus for us doing this is all about our customers. Uh, we have an opportunity to bring significant value to our customers and to the state as a result of the work that our federal delegation did, and uh, we can't let that slip by. And so while I can't speak for what other companies are thinking, in our case, this is all about our customers. And uh, by doing this, we're not only setting up uh, our customers for the long term to have a very strong supply of renewable energy, but we're able to do it uh, in a very, very competitive manner. Well, you remember, you remember this. this. This industry is different than some other industries. Once they make this investment, it's going to be here for the next 40, 50 years, which means we are going to say we have reliable, low-cost, renewable energy produced right here in the state of Iowa. What a great selling point as we try to get additional investments like we've seen with Facebook Google and the like. If you want to talk about that, Bill, yeah. it, it keeps the right. overall down. Right. So um, in our case, uh, this would be applying to Mid-American Energy customers. Uh, as a result of uh, this project, we're actually able to uh, reduce rates uh, by $10 million uh, by 2017. And uh, the result of that, of course, is, is again, very significant. Uh, opportunities for for customers going forward. How much does that change in the overall average? Uh, the total would be uh, on average about a percent reduction across the uh, uh, across the, uh, the the fleet. So, can you put it in perspective how much energy you use on balance of the other operation? A lot. <laughs> no, I can answer like that. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> you know, it's 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 hard to sort of put it in a uh, in a, in a term of of, of homes, uh, but um, when you look at uh, our overall uh, fleet of wind, uh, if you in 2016 when the when the fleet is built out, uh, you could do the calculation at about 39 uh, percent of the energy that our customers would use could be supplied by wind. 16. So this, this, it was very well this, significant. Well, this really leads the nation, right? Yep. It does. Yep. Okay, this company will lead the nation in terms of the, the percentage of the electricity generated by wind. We're very proud to say Iowa already leads the nation in the percentage of winter, wind. I think it's about a little over 20 percent that we are as a state, but they will be at 40 percent. Uh, certainly, uh, uh, that'll be our our uh, preference, but the actual vendors and the constructors and the contractors have not been selected yet. We're still under negotiations. I'm sorry. Well, the 460 are cons uh, they're uh, operations and maintenance technicians who will climb the towers, uh, maintain the facilities, and operate the facilities. Uh, it was very important. The way the uh, rule is set up, there's two criteria. One is that we have to be <coughs> in continuous construction by the end of the year. Uh, the second criteria, end, end, end of this year, end of 2013. Uh, the other criteria is to have invested 5% uh, of the project cost uh, by the end of the year. Obviously, it's our intent to push forward and get this done and be in full construction by, by the end of this year. Thanks for coming, everybody. Okay, thank thank you. you very much.